Hello, in this lecture, we will record governmental transactions, this time using a projects fund. So the fund we will be working on for the governmental transactions will be a project fund. This will be our chart of accounts. We've got the assets, the liabilities, the fund balance accounts, and then the temporary accounts like the income statement accounts, revenue and expenditures, the accounts that will close out at the end of the time period. We have our data over here on the left hand side. We're going to use this data to enter the journal entries into the blue area, then use uh, post those journal entries to a shorthand posting uh, mechanism here worksheet where we have the beginning balances, nothing and we have the adjustments and then we'll see the adjustments net here what the ending balances will be as we go. And of course, we have the accounting equation up top that should remain in balance as well. So let's see the first one we have here. We're going to say this is going to be C1. So I'm just going to say this is C1 and the project start uh, amount build. So we're starting the project and we have the amount that will be billed. If we look at our chart of accounts to see what we are going to start off with, which will be the construction expenditures for the street project here. So we're going to take that. That's going to be an expenditure. It's going to be a debit balance, similar to expense type accounts. Debit balances, we're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which is another debit. So I'm going to copy that. We're going to put it on top of our journal entry. We're going to paste it one, two, three. So we just have the amounts or the, the content and not the formatting of the cell. The amount that we're going to in here is going to be that 50,000 so we're going to say 50,000 and we haven't yet paid it therefore we're going to have what would be similar in thought to financial accounting a liability in this case we're going to call it vouchers payable it's going to be the orange liability account liabilities having credit balances this one increasing the liability with a credit so the credit will go on bottom I'm going to copy that paste it one two three on the bottom we're going to have a credit of the 50,000. So there is our journal entry debit construction expenditures for the street project and then credit vouchers payable. And we will post that out to the middle column here. So we're going to have construction uh, expenditures in Q13. That's going to equal and I'm going to point to this 50,000. And that will, of course, bring us up to 50,000. Put us out of balance here. Then we're going to go to the vouchers payable in Q6 equals and point to the credit here. And that'll put us up in the credit direction, 50,000, which is a negative number for Excel credit for us and put us back in balance with green zeros at the bottom. I'm going to scroll back over to the data. I'm going to highlight that information, make it green, indicating that we have completed C1. Moving on to C2, we're going to say C2 is going to be the next transaction where we have the data saying that we bid, accepted, and awarded. So bid was accepted and awarded for 840000 So we're going to put the encumbrances in here because it is a bid. It hasn't yet happened yet. So the encumbrance is going to happen before the actual expenditure. So we're going to record the encumbrances and the encumbrances are going to be down here uh, listed and similar to like the income statement accounts or the temporary accounts and we're going to copy the encumbrances they have debit balances similar to expenses and we're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it which in this case is another debit going to paste it one two three in f8 right click paste one two three the amount will be equal to this eight hundred and forty thousand we're going to credit something for the same 840000 and it will go to the encumbrances other account every time we, we um, record the encumbrances and that will be in the encumbrances outstanding. So we're going to record that as well up here. Right click, copy and paste one, two, three. So we're going to record the equal and opposite amounts in terms of debits into encumbrances project and credit to encumbrances outstanding that will be outstanding so let's go down here and and we're going to post this to q14 so q14 equals pointing to this 840,000 debit that will bring us up 840,000 here and put us out of balance by 840,000 then we're going to go to q10 equals and point to the credit of 840,000 bringing us up in the credit direction to 840,000 and putting us back in balance, hopefully. So green balance, green zeros back in balance looks good. Going to make it green over here in the data uh, showing <laughs> that we have completed that. 
And we're going to move on to the next item of C3. C3, it's right there. So we had a sale of bonds. So we had the face amount, the percentage on the bond. We have the accrued interest and the premium. This is all relevant information uh, when we look at the bond service fund. But for us right now, we're saying that we, we were getting this 800000 through the bond that was issued by the state. Therefore, is cash affected in this case? We're going to say, yeah, we got 800000 for the bond. Uh, cash, as always, has a debit balance. We're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case would be another debit. So I'm going to paste that one, two, three. Amount will be equal to the amount of the 800000 provided. We're going to credit something for 800000 And uh, we're going to put this to somewhere in, in the revenue account. We're going to call it other financing sources So from the bond. So we're just going to call it basically exactly what it is in the temporary accounts section saying that we got cash or we're going to call it some type of uh, other revenue in the uh, other financing sources area. So we're going to copy that. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it. One, two, three. It's going to go on the bottom. Again, similar. we're recording it similar to a revenue or temporary type account and therefore it has a credit balance because revenue has a credit balance. We're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case would be a credit. So I'm going to put my cursor in Q5 and say that, that equals and point to this 800,000. Also note that as we record the revenue here, as we record the other financing sources down in the revenue section and the temporary account section, that that is different than uh, financial accounting where we would uh, be recording the cash and then the bonds payable here. So in this case, it's financing the project. So that's why we're recording it in terms of the project fund down in the revenue area. We're going to say Q12 equals pointing to this 800,000. That should bring us back up to uh, 800,000 and put us back in balance. Scrolling back over, we're going to say that now this has been completed. Going to make that green indicating the fact that it has been completed. And now we will be on C4. C4. It's going to be an explosive one. We have payables recorded, uh, recorded above were paid. That's good. So we're going to say we paid something. Is cash affected? We're going to say yes it is because we paid something. And cash has a debit balance. We're going to make it go down by doing the same thing to it. I mean by doing the opposite thing to it, which in this case is a credit. So if, if cash is affected, I would ask the same questions that I would generally ask when working on for-profit accounting. What can we figure out to do? What do we know about cash? If cash is affected, that's something we know about first. So let's do that. Right click and paste it. One, two, three, and we're going to say there's a credit of the 50,000, I believe it was. Let's double check that. Oh, it's 50,000 here. So there's the 50 credit of the 50, and then we're going to debit the same 50,000, and we're paying off, just like for, for financial accounting, the liability. So here's the liability we put on the books. We had a credit of 50,000. We now paid it. That needs to go down to zero. How do we make something go down? We do the opposite thing to it, which in this case would be a debit. So I'm going to copy that. We'll put it on top in the debit section and right click, paste it, one, two, three. Then we can post this out, see if it does what we think it should. It should make cash go down and this uh, vouchers payable go to zero. Something's in vouchers payable, so I'm going to double click on it, go to the end of it, plus, then point to this 50,000. When we select enter, it should take the 50,000 down to zero and put us out of bounds by 50,000. Then we're going to do the same thing for the cash. I'm going to, there's something in cash in Q5. Therefore, going to double click on it, go to the end and plus and point to the credit of 50,000, which should take the 800,000 down by 50,000 and put us back in balance. So there we have that going to scroll back over to the data and we have completed C4 so I'm going to highlight that and make it green indicating that it has been done and we are now on C5 so C5 and progress payment on the project so now we have a progress payment that has happened so there's two things that are going to happen there one now there, there's actually been the payment so we're going to record the expenditures for the flows and we need, to re we need to reduce the encumbrances that we recorded at the point in time that we, we had the bid on the, on the project. So, so 
That means that we're going to scroll over here and we're going to say that the encumbrances outstanding of the 840, that needs to go down as well as the encumbrances by this 420. So this is a credit in encumbrances outstanding. We're going to make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it, which in this case will be a debit. So I'm going to do that first. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to put it on top in the debit section, right-clicking, pasting, one, two, three. Amount will be equal to 420. Then we're going to credit 420 as well. And the credit's going to go to the equal and opposite uh, account when we're talking about encumbrances and encumbrances outstanding. In this case, uh, the encumbrances, it has a debit balance. We need to make it go down. Therefore, we're doing the opposite thing to it, which in this case would be a debit, I mean a credit. So there is that. So when we post this out, we should reduce the outstanding uh, encumbrances outstanding and encumbrances project by the 420. So I'm going to post this. We're saying Q10, double click, go to the end of it, plus pointing to 420,000 should bring the 840,000 down by 420,000 to a total of 420,000. We're going to do the same thing in Q14, double clicking, going to the end of it, and then slightly different because we're pointing to the credit of 420,000 for the encumbrances on the, on the project. And that should bring this 840 down to 840. So we're still at the credit, 840,000 in, encumbrances outstanding, and a debit equal and opposite to that credit of 420 in the encumbrances account. Then we also need to do the other transaction related to C5 progress payments, that being the recording of the expenditure. So the expenditure, like uh, expenses, is a debit balance account. And we need to make it go up because it generally does go up just like ex expenses do. So we're looking for this construction expenditures street project for looking at the expenditures account. Keep that separate from the encumbrances account. And we're going to copy that. We're going to put, I'm going to skip a line, start a new journal entry, and then put this one on top for that journal entry, pasting it one, two, three. Amount will be equal to that same 420. And then we're going to credit something for 420. We're not going to put it, uh, reduce the cash yet. We will do that in the future. At this point, we're going to put it into the contract payable and then at a later point, pay it out of the contracts payable, meaning this contracts payable account, a liability account going up with a credit, and then we'll pay that out next time. So contracts payable is a liability. We need to make it go up. Therefore, we're going to do the same thing to it, which in this case is another credit. Okay, so there's our journal entry. We're going to post this last one out, and I'm going to say construction expenditures. Something is in it in Q13. Double click on it. Go to the end of it, plus point to the 420, and that should make the 50 go up by 420 to 470. Put us out of balance by 420, and we will then post the contracts payable to contracts payable in Q7 equals pointing to the 420,000. That will bring the liability up to 420000 in the credit direction and hopefully put us back in balance. So there we have that. So that's going to be the first part of this. We're going to continue on uh, with some more transactions in the project fund next time. And then we will put together the financial statements for the project fund. And it will be great.